long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. So yesterday, uh, the world was buzzing about Patty Jenkins announcing on a podcast that she was re- revisiting Rogue Squadron. And the story she told is pretty interesting. It's not exactly the truth. Uh, I do know what the truth is. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. It's uh, compelling, but it's also sad. Okay, it's it's one of those things where you're looking at it going, um, okay, but Cameron talked to Sparrow, which is why there's a Sparrow here, and he confirmed that Patty Jenkins had an off-site meeting with John Favreau about reviving uh, the Rogue Squadron film, and there's a very strategic move by Iger about it. But let's talk about something different for a minute. So everybody knows this is my dad in uh, East Anglia during World War II. He was with, he was a technical sergeant, high-speed radio, uh, with the 8th Air Force. And one of the things that I have in common with Patty Jenkins is her father served in Vietnam. My father served in World War II. Uh, but I also have that same similarity with Kathleen Kennedy. Her father served with the United States Navy in World War II as a seaman third class on a ship in the Pacific. I could not find uh, any uh, records of what ship he served on. Uh, so we'll, we can assume that Donald R. Kennedy had saw action against the Japanese. Like my father saw action against the uh, Germans. And Ke- of course, sadly, Patty Jenkins' father never came back from Vietnam. He was shot down and killed. So as the daughter of a veteran and the wife of a, a retired military officer, I understand what Patty Jenkins said when she wanted to make a fighter pilot movie in honor of her father. She was very young when he died. So I see him in her eyes standing on the wing of his F-4, fierce against the sky. Okay. And if you've ever heard an F-4, they're very, very loud. They show up at at multi-generational aircraft air shows all the time. And when you hear them coming, it's the sound of freedom in a way you've never heard it before. Unless there's an uh, F-22 there. And then it's like, Katie, bar the door. Okay, that's loud, all right? So Patty Jenkins really wanted to make this movie, a movie about fighter pilots in honor of her father. It would, To her, it sounds, when she talked about it and talks about it, it sounds like a magnum opus, okay? So, and even in the trailer uh, for Rogue Squadron that came out before it was canceled, and I'm going to uh, include a connection to that trailer from IGN in the d- description of this. So Patty Sink- Jenkins says she signed a new deal with Lucasfilm to return as the writer and director of Star Wars Rogue One, Rogue Squadron, period. Director, that's good. Writer, I'm not sure. We all know that she has a very hard time dealing with people who want to do changes one of the fact, reasons why she didn't get along with Kathleen Kennedy is Kennedy continuously wanted to um, change things with Rogue Squadron. And what Ka- again, what Kathleen Kennedy didn't take away from that is who Petty Jenkins was and where she was coming from. Okay. 
And also the fact that Kennedy's just a bitch. All right, but we'll talk a little bit about all that. Um, the, the, the script was finished. And when Kamran uh, connected with the writer, who was a friend of his, that wrote the script, he said, I haven't heard this. So I hope that they use that script that he wrote. Okay, because as much as on Patty Jenkins' side as I am, the fact of the matter is Wonder Woman 2 is terrible. All right, I, I did not, would not watch it. And she can't write. There are directors out there that just can't write. In fact, it's very rare that you find a director that can both write and direct. You know, George Lucas is one of those. All right, he wrote Star Wars. But the input that he had from his wife made it a better movie. And the fact that she helped him edit it and won an Academy Award for it made it a better movie. When he went back to The Empire Strikes Back, he produced it, but he got Irv Kirshner, a former teacher of his, to direct the movie, and Larry Kasdan to write the movie after Lee Brackett passed away from cancer. And he gave Lee Brackett a, uh, a, a, a credit because she deserved it. Okay, interesting that he would hire a she to write the first script. I want you all to go into your little groups, come up with why a so-called misogynist in, uh, let's say, Molly Damon's opinion, etc., why he why he would have a woman write the first script. Okay, he's such a misogynist. Anyway, um, in fact, when I look at... Uh, George and Patty, they're somewhat the same uh, personality in that their vision is the only vision, and compromising and listening to other people is extremely difficult for them. And George has outright admitted it, that there are places where he stepped too far with the, the, the prequels. Okay. But even in that, they're better than the sequel trilogy. We all know that. Let's go back to Patty Jenkins. So Patty, and this is uh, Jeff Snyder, the greaseball from Collider, says, I really don't believe any of this. Of course, you know, he was the one that put out the Ray movies actually really happening when Daisy keeps saying there's no fucking script. And then he quietly says, well, some people are just really misinformed about that. And he doesn't call them out. What a fucking pussy. Anyway, Patty Jenkins. She goes to meet Favreau off campus and then goes on a podcast and says, the movie's happening. The only, the only thing that bothers me, again, it should bother everybody, is that um, who's the writer? Now, they said writing and directing. Again, that's a bad, com bad combo for her. I know she collaborated closely with the original writer of the script and she liked what he wrote. I'm hoping that that is a script they use, but I don't know. Now, and let's talk about why they canceled the movie in the first place. Well, I know why. Uh, every time Kathleen Kennedy would meet with them, the writer and Jenkins, there would be an argument to the point where Jenkins just left, left, the, left it because Kennedy was meddling like she always does, trying to fuck it up worse or fuck it up, period. And this was some place that Jenkins would not allow a callous bitch like Kennedy to go. That we do on your fiery throne presiding over the damned. <laughs> well, she's... Horrible, I've made a ghastly, ghastly mistake. I've been here all night. Get out! <laughs> all the people that have gone out there against the mainstream media and said, you're going to call us racist, you're going to call us the 
potential Timothy McVeigh's. Fuck you. Pentagram on the floor and chanted, I summon thee three times. <laughs> now, why is this happening? Why would they, okay, Rogue Squadron, directed by a uh, woman director, Patty Jenkins, squeezing out the fake Ray movie is probably why. And because the Rogue Squadron script was good enough to, to actually go to production. But it also erases... Uh, Chinoy, uh, Daisy Ridley, and uh, Kathleen Kennedy's feminazi bullshit. Okay, there's, look, there's feminism, and then there's feminazi bullshit, okay? And uh, that's probably why uh, Iger decided to get Favreau to go meet uh, Patty Jenkins, I don't know how Rogue Squadron was written. I'm hoping it would be a male-centric, a main character male-centric script because I'm sick and tired of the females. So I'm going to trust Ms. Jenkins and the fact that her dad meant so much to her that she would actually have a guy like, I don't know, Wedge Antilles... um, Luke, et cetera, in this. Luke, after all, was the one apparently that named uh, Red Squadron Rogue Squadron. Okay, so we just have to, we just have to wait. Um, so Jenkins, I think, despite her fuck up with uh, Wonder Woman 2, that she has fired from the Cleopatra uh, project and... Uh, basically has a reputation for not getting along with people. I am hoping that if she doesn't write it, and, you know, the podcast says she's writing and directing, which makes me go, ooh, ooh, no, thank you, please, no. And the reason why I simply is um, she is not a good writer. And she doesn't take... Uh, input from other people very well. Uh, and she, she wants her name in places it doesn't belong. She didn't write Wonder Woman. She wanted a, a, a credit for writing. And that was, you know, I'm going to say it. Everybody liked it but me, but I'm historical. Uh, I, when it comes to history, I do not trust uh, anybody like somebody who isn't a historian in Hollywood to do it right. I think the only person who was able to do it right is Steven Spielberg. And that's because he respected it. Um, The fact of the matter is Wonder Woman, it's a comic book and I understand that. But don't take historical figures from history and make them something they weren't. That was my problem. But anyway, uh, she had problems with Kathleen Kennedy. Personal problems. Not surprising. Kathleen Kennedy is a mean girl. All right. The way she treated Luke, Mark Hamill, the way she treated Gina Carano, the fact that she uh, apparently had told people they were going to have trouble with that girl when uh, Gina showed up on set. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy is your typical popular girl who's very insecure about herself and can only surround herself with sycophants, which means she has no real female friends. All right. That's not by her choice. You know, I count my female friends on my fingers because that's my choice because I've been backstabbed too many times by women like Kathleen Kennedy. I grew up with women like Kathleen Kennedy. Okay. They're not normal. All right. They're just, I mean, everything that they do wrong is a guy's, is a guy's problem. It, it was the man's fault. You know, so when you look at Kennedy, you go, she is uncomfortable with herself. She obviously did not have a great relationship with her father. 
doesn't understand henceforth that Patty Jenkins did and doesn't understand where Patty Jenkins is coming from with the this movie, okay? And doesn't like the fact that Patty Jenkins doesn't want to follow what she wants in this. I'm sure there's probably lesbian relationships or some other woke fucking shit that, you know, Kennedy's got her mind wrapped around. And it's not going to work. I mean, let me give you an example of Kathleen Kennedy. You know the creepy bitch Katie, o o Katie O'Brien who play the, plays the imperial infiltrator that kills... Uh, the doctor in uh, Mando season three. The bitch is in Twisters three, probably at the behest of Kennedy. All right. Spielberg obviously didn't give a shit. All right, because Spielberg is listed as one of the producers. So they have Lesbo in that. Okay, you know, Miss, I want to look like a guy, cunt. Okay, which I hate Katie O'Brien. I want her character to get mashed like potatoes in Star Wars because they fucking can't stand her. And she can't act. Bitch can't act. So there you go. Um, anyway. What I want to say is if Jenkins had the blessing of, of Favreau and Iger to go ahead and say something, then this movie's happening. But you've got uh, Jeff Snyder, who, who quote-unquote, has a great reputation of getting things right, giggle snort, uh, whatever that means, uh, saying he didn't believe it. That means, in Jeff Snyder speak, well, nobody talked to me about it. All right, that's what that means. I give this thing 50-50, but Sparrow is very good at getting at getting to the bottom of the barrel on this. The only concern I have is Jenkins never called the original writer of the script. And that is the script they should do. And Patty should direct it. Because obviously if it's the script she wanted to do in the first place, then it was the script that she dreamed about. So why not go with it? All right. This is a catch-22. If she behaves herself, we'll have a great movie. If she doesn't, it'll be off the rails. And not in a good way. Not, this is off, this is a party, this is like an unhinged party. This is awesome. It's going to be my, like, more like an unhinged, holy shit, what did she do? Okay, that's the thing that concerns me. But the positive is that it looks to me that Bob Iger is quietly trying to put the Rogue Squadron movie in place of any idea that Kathy Kennedy had of bringing back the skinny two-by-four vegan bitch, Ray. This is Steph. I'll see you around the galaxy.